My name is Antonio Johnson, raised in Asbury Park, New Jersey. Now I'm just pursuing my passion for the love of arts. So after my time at DeVry, um, I decided to enter the military. I went to the Navy. I scored very high on the ASVAB test um, and good enough to be a nuclear engineer. When you're in basic training, they do extra screening for the nukes and for Navy SEALs because it's such a high paying job. Um, upon doing their extra screening, they found out that I had um, a hole in my heart, which I did not know I had. The military found it, and because of it, I had to get separated and sent home. And then on February 14th, 2010, my heart was broken, and uh, that's when I had my open heart surgery. And then after that, I realized life was pretty much too short. Um, I had to pursue my dreams. Um, I spoke to my girlfriend at the time, who's now my wife, who kind of encouraged me to just pursue like what it is I really enjoy doing. And one of the things I love is I love entertainment. After surgery, I went back to work for a little bit and then I enrolled uh, into Brookdale. While there, I had the wonderful pleasure of just working with so many wonderful people. The first production I'd ever been a part of was called The Reluctant Dragon, which is a children's play. That was my first time ever on stage. After I graduated from Brookdale, I didn't know where to go. Um, I didn't know what to do. And I found out that NJIT actually has a theater program. My first production there was a show called I, The Icarus Project, which was essentially my first musical which was uh, an original piece written by one of the professors there, um, the late Dan Drew, and it was a rock opera. While I was at Brookdale, I met a friend who was working on, who was working in production, and he was like, well, you know, you can start off as a PA, and you know, he was PAing on a bunch of different shows, like I said, and he actually called me one day, was like, hey, you know, I'm working on this show called I Break for Yard Sales, and then you need a PA, um, you know, if you want, you can come and I can get you in. So I was like, okay, sure. Um, at the end of the week, they were like, hey, we actually need someone to kind of finish the rest of the summer. And I pretty much called my manager. I was like, hey, I just want to let you know I'm not coming back. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have to quit. And I kind of quit that job, and that kind of launched my career into film and television. On one specific production project, the line producer there had asked me, um, what is it that you really want to do? And I said, I told her, I was like, I really want to be uh, an actor. I really want to be a performer. I really want to be in front of camera. So for that shoot, she actually made me um, like talent PA. Once I was able to make the transition from behind the camera to in front of the camera, um, I was blessed and fortunate with a lot of good opportunities. Um, I was able to be in a Super Bowl commercial. I had no idea who the, the star was. Um, I was on set, I was sitting next to this guy, and they were like, oh, there's a gentleman called Rice Gum, and that's who you're sitting next to. And I had no idea who Rice Gum was um, at the time. So it was a Super Bowl commercial for Monster Audio with Iggy Azalea and Rice Gum. And I'm literally the guy sleeping on the train like this the entire time, um, which was pretty cool. After that, I was able to be in a music video with uh, with Beyonce. Funny story, um, is I had no idea that that was a Beyonce music video. Um, I got a call from Background Inc. Uh, if I was available to be in an uh, A-list pop star music video. Next thing you know, I hear playback, and then I hear the song, I'm like, that's a Beyonce song. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a Beyonce music video. Um, it's her song already featuring Shate Wale, who's uh, an Afrobeats artist. Um, the next thing you know, they came out and told us, like, hey, okay, we need everyone to remove their shirts. I'm clearly not the most fit gentleman in, uh, in the world, but um, it was so interesting and so funny seeing all these other grown men um, immediately when they realized that we had to do the scene shirtless, immediately like, oh, I gotta do some push-ups. You know, I gotta get jacked. Oh, does anyone have any lotion? Some baby oil, I'm ashy. All these different things. And all these men were just like freaking out. And I was just, it was just, you know, it was kind of, it was just funny to me. I was able to meet another casting director and one summer, she asked me to do a self-tape for TickPick. It was a locker room scene. So we filmed that commercial in August of 2019. It actually went on to be kind of viral. Um, their most viewed video on their YouTube page, uh, about three or four years later, they actually contacted me to, have, to ask if it can be broadcast. So it's currently broadcasting on a lot of different networks. So I'm fortunate and happy and uh, blessed that I've had that opportunity. So throughout my um, career, uh, my performance career, I had always had this inkling about what to do after, right? I knew I wasn't gonna be able to be young forever. I uh, can't stay handsome forever. Eventually you grow old. And uh, throughout my time as a performer, I had been getting just little tips from people who I'd worked with and known who felt that there were things, they realized there were things that I would notice that the average person might not notice and would tell me that, hey, you might actually have an eye for directing and you know you might like it. Um, eventually, I end up um, looking just to, looking for a job um, and found a theater teacher job at St. Rose High School in Belmar, New Jersey, and actually hired me to be uh, a theater teacher and broadcast journalism teacher. This year, uh, this was my first full academic year, 
and I was blessed with the ability to direct my first musical, which was Little Shop of Horrors. I don't know if I could ask for, uh, I guess, a better musical to kind of start off your career. It was a lot of fun. So that kind of started my career as director. You know, looking back over my career, each different area uh, of my career, each time has taught me something new, something different. Um, you know, the beginning stage kind of was a humbling experience, learning everything, then being able to transition as a performer and artist to be in front of the camera. And it truly is a blessing. You know, I give God thanks for everything that, that I've learned, everything that I've accumulated at this, at this point. Admittedly, you know, while directing and, you know, set construction and building and all these things are wonderful, there's still this under, un, not underlying, there's still this desire and fire and passion for performance. There's just something that about performing that allows me to escape, that allows me to just pretend and have fun. But it's just something about the, create, the creative part and playing pretend that I just love and would just enjoy doing that for the rest of my life.